the effective force constant of two springs. Two springs with the same unstretched length but different force constants K1 and K2 are attached to a block with mass M on a level frictionless surface. Calculate the effective force constant K effective in each of the three cases A, B and C depicted in the figure and part D. So in A we have two springs connected in parallel to this mass M. In part B we have a block with mass M connected with spring uh, K1 to the left and with spring K2 to the right spring constant k2 and in the third one k1 and k2 two springs are connected in series to block with mass m in part d an object with mass m suspended from a uniform spring with a force constant k vibrates with a frequency f1 when the spring is cut in half and the same object is suspended from one of the halves the frequency is f2 what is the ratio f1 over f2 now let's look at the first case in part a we have the two springs with spring constants k1 and k2 they are both stretched by the same amount delta x to the right and therefore there will be a restoring force fs1 and fs2 developing on the two branches giving me a total force f to the left for the block with mass m so i can see that the restoring force fs1 will be equal to k1 times delta x and fs2 the second spring restoring force will be k2 times delta x the net force on the x-axis will be equal to minus k1 plus k2 times delta x so if delta x is equal to x this is equal to mx double dot so i call delta x the displacement x so the total force uh, that i see here is the sum of the two restoring forces fs1 plus fs2 that is k1 plus k2 delta x in magnitude so the equation of motion is mx double dot is equal to minus effective spring constant times x so that i can replace these two springs with a single spring with an effective spring constant k effective and that gives me for the effective spring constant k1 plus k2 so i can see that a parallel connection of the two springs will result in a spring constant which is the sum of the two spring constants now in part b when this the left spring is stretched by an amount delta x1 the right spring is compressed by the same amount delta x1 so the restoring force when this spring is stretched will be to the left to restore the unstretched length of the spring and the restoring force for the second spring will also be to the left because it's compressed it has to be stretched again to go back to its equilibrium length so the total force on the x-axis net force will be equal to uh, minus the restoring force fs1 minus the restoring force fs2 they're both acting in minus i hat direction this is equal to m x double dot mass times acceleration so i can see that i have minus k1 delta x uh, minus k2 delta x the displacement from the equilibrium let's call this delta x it's the same for the two springs uh, so this is going to be equal to minus k1 plus k2 times delta x is equal to mx double dot so delta x i'm call, i'm going to call x the total displacement from equilibrium so this will be minus k1 plus k2 times x is equal to mx double dot which has the same form as the part a so i can see that the effective spring constant that is going to replace these two springs will be once again k1 plus k2 so this is another example of having 
a parallel connection of the two springs and that is basically something we can see from the displacements from equilibrium being the same. The delta x is the total amount of stretch or compression of the two springs. In part c I have the first spring that is displaced by an amount delta x1, the second spring displaced from its unstretched position by delta x2 and I feel a total restoring force f to the left. So I can see that the net force on the x-axis is minus f which is equal to m x double dot and this force f is due to the stretch of the second spring k2 here so it's going to be equal to minus k it's going to be k2 delta x2 so the magnitude of the force will be equal to k2 delta x2 acting to the left now if i write the net force on the x-axis which is uh, for if i write this net force for uh, this point here so let's concentrate on this point and write the uh, net force acting on it it is net force equal to k2 delta x2 because the second spring has been stretched the restoring force will be acting to the right here so this will be uh, basically acting to the right that will be F2 and this will be acting to the left that will be F1 due to the first uh, spring. So K2 delta X2 minus K1 delta X1 will be equal to 0 because I have reached the equilibrium uh, for this point. The, and K2 delta X2 uh, and this is a massless point so I'm assuming that these are uh, light strings so this is a massless point therefore f1 must be equal to f2 so uh, it's a massless uh, joint uh, point so the net force must be zero therefore k2 delta x2 must be equal to k1 delta x1 and that must be equal to F. And if I write the total displacement delta X, this will be delta X1 plus delta X2, so that I can write the equation of motion as minus K effective times delta X is equal to MX double dot, so that the force F, the total force, is K effective times delta x written in terms of the total displacement from the uh, unstretched positions. So once again, the reason why these two forces are equal here is because this is a massless point. Net, net force equals ma, but m is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, the displacement delta x is force f divided by the effective spring constant k effective which is delta x1 plus delta x2 where delta x1 is f divided by k1 and delta x2 is f divided by k2 so i can see that 1 over k effective will be equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 so in that case, the effective spring constant that will replace the two springs in series connection will be K1, K2 divided by K1 plus K2. Now if I go to part D, in part D uh, we have the uh, two springs connected in series so we can think of it that way uh, so we have a spring constant k prime and spring constant k prime here uh, and the effective spring constant 
is 1 over k which is 1 over k prime plus 1 over k prime which is 2 over k prime or k is equal to k prime divided by 2. So uh, when you think about the uh, angular frequency of oscillation omega 1 which is square root k over m uh, for simple harmonic motion square root k over m will be equal to square root uh, k prime over 2m so k prime over 2m and in the second case when i have only one of these springs connected so i cut the spring in half uh, when the spring is cut in half and the same object is suspended from one of the halves what will happen is that the spring constant uh, will be uh, k prime so omega 2 will be equal to k prime over m uh, square root so if i compare these two the angular frequency omega 1 uh, when i have the full length divided by the angular frequency omega 2 when i have half the length the full length version has a spring constant k prime over 2 half a length version has a spring constant k prime so omega 1 over omega 2 is 2 pi f1 divided by 2 pi f2 so i can see that this is the ratio of the frequencies f1 to f2 and that ratio f1 divided by f2 will be equal to uh, square root k prime over 2m uh, times m over k prime square root and this will give us for the ratio f1 over f2 1 over square root 2 all right so uh, we're talking about different types of connections of the springs so we have a block with mass m connected to two springs in parallel at spring constants k1 and k2 i want to be able to write the equation of motion as mx double dot equals minus k effective times x so these two spring forces will be replaced by a single force f which is the sum of the two restoring forces noticing that i have the same stretch from the equilibrium positions delta x the net force will be uh, k1 delta x plus k2 delta x the sum of these two and therefore i see that effective spring constant is k1 plus k2 in the second case uh, k1 is to the left k2 is to the right of the block with mass m and when k1 is stretched by delta x k2 is compressed by the same amount delta x however the direction of the forces restoring forces will be both to the left uh, in order to obtain the unstretched position and minus k1 delta x minus k2 delta x will be mx double dot if i call delta x x i see that the effective spring constant is k1 plus k2 if i have two springs connected in series the sum of their displacements from the unstretched position will be the total uh, stretch uh, to total displacement of the block with mass m and the, the the block will feel a restoring force f which will be equal to k2 delta x2 if i consider a massless point in the uh, at the joint between the two springs uh, this will feel a restoring force of zero because it's massless and the restoring force to the right is f2 due to the stretch of k2 and f1 uh, due to the a stretch of k1 so f2 minus f1 is 0 so k k1 delta x1 is k2 delta x2 which is also equal to f uh, so i can see that delta x i is f over k i for each spring here and the total uh, displacement is delta x so mx double dot is minus k effective times total displacement delta x gives me uh, 
delta x equals f over k effective, which is delta x1 f over k1 uh, plus delta x2, which is f over k2. So k effective is k1 k2 over k1 plus k2. In part d, we have an object with mass m suspended from a uniform spring with a force constant k vibrating with a frequency f1. And then we cut it in half. So what is this k? If I have two springs uh, with equal spring constants k prime, uh, then the effective spring constant for this total is spring is 1 over k equals 1 over k prime plus 1 over k prime. Because of the result in part c, it is k prime over 2. So if you, if you cut this spring in half, you obtain a spring constant k prime. If you have it the full length, the spring constant is k prime over 2. So if you uh, look, remember that the angular frequency is square root k over m because we have mx double dot is equal to minus kx. So here is our block with mass m here that is attached to the end of the uh, spring. So this is my m that will oscillate on this frictionless surface. So here mu uh, k is equal to zero. And I will see that Omega is square root k over m. So in the first case, it is square root k prime over 2m. In the second case, it, uh, case, it's square root k prime over m when it is cut in half. So the ratio of omegas also give me the ratio of the frequencies, which is 1 over square root 2 pi, uh, 1 over square root 2.